It's time to continue our story of Red Hood and how he was brought into the world of Batman. This is the complete story series where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel sex and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. When we last left off, Bruce Wayne had lost his research development division, Nightwing came to town to make sure that he was okay, and on top of all of that, a new player entered town going by the name Red Hood, and he was here to mess with the Black Mask's operation. Batman and Nightwing confronted him, and we saw a level of skill that they hadn't seen before, which led Batman to wonder who this man was. Meanwhile, Red Hood tracked down the Joker and hauled him off as his prisoner. The Red Hood is still off causing problems for Black Mask, though, as he blows up another of his transports. Black Mask turns to his assistant, wanting to know, what did we lose? He's told that it's a bunch of rifles, and he responds by telling the assistant to send down a couple of his best men, to which Daniel, his assistant, replies with, he already did, and now they're missing. They look at the situation, and Daniel explains, this guy is sending a message. He isn't stealing the weapons, he's destroying them. Black Mask turns back, well, he's not just our problem, so let's get someone else to take out our trash. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the world, Batman stands with Zatanna at a temple, and she tells him that it's sealed. Can't he see that? Batman tells her, I do. They both look down at the sealed Lazarus pit in front of them. So why did you drag me out here if you already knew that it was sealed? I didn't seal this one when I destroyed them all. All right, but why am I here? Can the Lazarus pit raise the dead? No, it rejuvenates the living. Is that a theory or a fact? I guess it's a fact, but well, it's what I've always heard. Then it's a theory. I still need to know why you wanted me here, Batman. I needed someone that I could trust, but I had to settle for you. He then takes off in the bat plane as Zatanna is left to wonder what that was all about. There is tension between Batman and Zatanna, and it's from Identity Crisis. I'll link that down below. Meanwhile, in Gotham, Onyx is looking at some of the thugs. She jumps down into the group and begins to beat them, demanding to know who they work for. And they tell her, the Red Hood. Meanwhile, over at Star City, Batman is looking at a living Green Arrow. He died and was raised from the dead recently, and Batman wants to know how. Green Arrow explains that he died in a plane crash, and that Hal Jordan gave his gift to him to allow him to return. It's just like that. Batman looks at him, and he asks, Were you preparing for it with any occult actions? And Green Arrow tells him, I died in an explosion on a plane. It's not like I had time to pack a lunch or anything. So Batman takes off again. And as he's soaring through the skies, he gets a call from Onyx, who asks if he knows who this Red Hood guy is. He tells her to tell him if she has the location and call about nothing else. And then he hangs up on her. She sits there frustrated when Red Hood walks up behind her. Those morons I killed were selling drugs to 12 year olds. Hi there, I thought I felt my ears burning. She looks at him, you're the Red Hood. Very astute, what was your first clue? They both look at the thugs and he asks her, so what did I miss? Well, they seem to want to know why Black Mask hasn't killed you himself yet. Well, I guess that tells you that I'm either lucky or very good. Either way, I seem to have made myself an enemy out of all of the bad guys. Over in Metropolis, Batman knocks out a goon as Superman swoops in covering him. I had him, Superman. I never had a doubt. Now, why have you come to Metropolis to stop a bank robbery? If you had called ahead, I would have gotten us theater tickets. I came to talk. Really? Because I was serious about the theater tickets. I really need to talk. All right, let's talk. Back at the warehouse, Red Hood drops a smoke grenade on the table and he leaps in. You can watch me or join me, it's up to you. And then he jumps into the fight. He throws one guy into a wall and Onyx looks down and decides, why the hell not? Back with Batman and Superman, Batman asks Superman about the time that he died. Superman explains that he didn't die, he mirrored death with a Kryptonian coma. And Batman looks at him, did you? Or is that what we told ourselves so that it would all make sense? I don't know, we've seen a lot of people rise from the dead, Bruce. Metamorpho, Green Arrow, Hal Jordan, it's not science. It has to be for me. I've always had the answers. The facts for every one of them that we lost. Whether they thought it was heaven or God or even magic. Magic is just another realm science. He forms a fist and he raises it. A Superman asks him, what is this about? And Batman softens up. I don't exactly know. Back at the warehouse, the two individuals, Red Hood and Onyx, find themselves surrounded with the bullets flying over their heads. But that doesn't stop them as they kick and drop every enemy that they find until they decide to make a break for the door. They run outside and that's where Hood has a weapon waiting. A Gatling gun. And he opens fire, murdering every single person in the building. 
Onyx calls out for him to stop. What is he doing? And he takes the barrel of the gun and he shoves it into her chin. What do you think I'm doing? What do you think this is all about? That we're just gonna rough up these guys to teach them a lesson? Welcome to planet Earth, baby. These dead sacks of meat on the floor made their living by beating, raping, and devouring. Fear isn't an answer. I'm not letting you get out of here. That's not really up to you. That's when Onyx notices that Red Hood slid a dagger into her shoulder before she even knew what was going on. And then he pointed the gun right at her. Batman flies back to Gotham thinking to himself, the armor has to be light enough to move to fight, but strong enough to protect. Sometimes, a great many times, it's not strong enough. It didn't protect Barbara who's fighting from a wheelchair, and it wasn't strong enough for Stephanie Brown. And it certainly wasn't strong enough for Jason. Willful Jason, who ignored danger, spat at risk, who was never frightened enough. I've always wondered, always, was he scared in the end? Was he praying that I would come save him? In those last moments when he knew that I wouldn't, did he hate me for it? Back in the alley, Red Hood stands over Onyx and he tells her the truth is, we need to kill everyone. He pulls the knife out, giving her a compression pad to stop the bleeding, and she hits the ground as he tells her, this is the part where you get up and you fight me. Then from behind him, he hears someone has joined the party. He turns his head and Batman tells him, no. Wow, I didn't even hear you land. That plane is really stealthy when you want it to be. You can be so quiet and crack, crack, crack. The Red Hood opens up on Batman with his guns. Batman runs into the building and Red Hood gives chase. Batman runs into the back of it and he slaps an explosive onto a dumpster. So as the Red Hood runs out into the alleyway, he jumps out, shooting at Batman. The dumpster explodes, forcing it towards the Red Hood who leaps over it. And as he jumps into the air, Batman throws his grappling line around Red Hood's foot, yanking him back down to the ground. Red Hood chuckles. <laughs> You are beyond thought. You act on instinct, Batman. A finely tuned instrument. A body trained to perfection. Techniques honed and mastered, along with expensive toys. Red Hood slices through the line. But you're not the only one with toys. And he fires a device at Batman, hitting him hard. Batman falls over, telling himself, That's impossible for Red Hood to have that. It's a device from Cord Industries that I ordered from them. Special. How can he have it? No more questions. No more dead ends. No more guessing. Tonight I find out the truth of this. And as Batman tells himself this, he throws explosives at Red Hood, blowing up the area, throwing him aside. They both run along the rooftops as Batman calls out, I need to know! And Red Hood continues to taunt him as they go back and forth. That's right, I want you to ask yourself, what have I done? Tell me! Murder! No, I killed, not murdered! Lightning goes off behind the two men as they go back and forth. A kick from Red Hood and then a headbutt, but Batman cuts into the mask. They both tumble over the side of the building and into the alleyway below, where Red Hood tears off Batman's cowl. They stand up and they look at each other, and Red Hood presses the button that releases his helmet telling Batman, I guess we should keep it even then. And Batman looks at him. Oh God! And Jason Todd looks back at him. No, you want to guess again? This has to be a ruse. Yeah, I think you know it in your gut. You can feel it. You've known it for weeks. Longer even. You knew it when we fought in the graveyard. You felt it when I swapped out with Clayface. That fight began with me and it ended with him. But you know what? I'm standing here in front of you right now. Batman stares at him. How did this happen? Jason touches a batarang with his ungloved hand and then he cuts into his own scalp to put blood on it. How I got here really doesn't matter. Here's my fingerprints and blood for you to check. But no matter what I am, it doesn't matter. That's not what this is all about. I'm the you. You that you are supposed to be. If you had killed the Joker years ago, beyond what happened to me, you could have saved so many people. You could have saved the world. But no, the Joker's murder is a long line of acts that you refuse to commit. You'll never cross that line. But I will. He then presses a button blowing up the helmet and it provides the escape that he needs. Batman went back to the Batcave where he ran the samples and it all added up. Alfred and Batman both realize that it's all true. And he walks over to the old Jason Todd Robin costume. Alfred asks if he wants it removed from the cave. But Bruce tells him no. This changes nothing. And he walks back into the cave, leaving Alfred looking at the Robin suit with sadness in his eyes. And that concludes part two to Under the Red Hood. The big reveal when Batman finally realizes what he's up against. Now, if you want to find out what's going to happen next in Under the Red Hood, then I think you need to subscribe to the channel. And if you don't care about Red Hood, well, we would appreciate you subscribing anyway, because it would be really nice of you. Don't forget, you can chat with me on Instagram and Twitter, at Comic Storian, and I'll see you next time right here.